looking through the comments, I've gotten a lot of questions about battery packs. And that's understandable, since everything I do is electric, people are really curious about runtime, and they're curious about what battery I'm running. These are the main questions I get in the comments on my videos of my mini cart, my four-wheeler, and the Murray Kilowatt. And this is an important question because, as people know, batteries can be very expensive. Many people want to know where to buy the battery pack from, and the typical barriers are ordering it and waiting because of lead time because some of the battery packs are built to order. The other challenge is cost, and that is a legitimate cost because the battery pack in most builds will be your most expensive component. Your electronics are your motor, your controller, and your battery. And the one place that I don't recommend going cheap or I don't recommend going too small is your battery because if you start with a high power battery, you have room to grow. If you start with a low power battery and decide later, oh, I want more power, if your battery can't pack can't push it, there's really no point. You're going to buy a higher power controller or a motor that can handle more power and your battery can't keep up. And so you're going to get cutouts because the BMS can't keep up, the cells can't keep up, too much voltage drop, things like that. So I think I have to break this down in, I'm going to break this down in two main categories. And I, what I mean by that is categories as far as the vehicle. So you have bigger categories, bigger vehicle categories like this and my Murray Kilowatt. A build like this and my Murray Kilowatt can hold quite a bit more battery pack and needs a lot more battery pack than a build like a dirt bike or a small mini go-kart. Uh, like my mini cart you've seen on the channel. The mini carts and small dirt bike builds can run one single pack that is 24 to say 32 amp hours pretty easily. A pack in that range at 72 to 76 volt is going to run you in the neighborhood of 800 to say $1,300 from most suppliers. That is in reach for a lot of people, but it's not in reach for everybody. When it comes to the smaller packs, and this is, I know this is gonna sound kind of backwards, but with the smaller packs, I can't really share with you any kind of secrets on a cheaper pack besides either A, building your own, which you're still gonna be limited on how low you can get the cost. I think the lowest you can get a 24 to say 32 amp hour 72 volt pack is somewhere in the neighborhood of 700 to a thousand dollars and whether you build it yourself or you go to a, a discount company like hot packs like hot packs has some really surprisingly low prices on battery packs i don't even know how they do it because i spend in materials what they're selling a fully built battery pack for now mine might be higher quality but i can't honestly say anything because i haven't disassembled their pack to look at how many layers of nickel and or copper they are using. I'm not really sure about the connections they use. I'm not even sure about what cells or BMS they use. I know that with my packs, I use pure nickel strip. I do not use copper because I don't want to risk bad connections. And I use either P42A Molly cells or I use JP40 cells, which are considered to be pretty, pretty good cells in the 21700 size. As far as BMS, I've experimented with two different kinds. One is DALI, and the other one is ANT, and is in ANT. DALIs are unreliable. I've had MOSFETs fail. I've had various other imbalance issues, like they don't balance very well, or they don't have a lot of authority to balance. I've seen a lot of issues with the DALI, and I cannot recommend anybody buy them. On the other hand, spending just slightly more money, you can get the ANT BMS and I have not seen a single ANTS BMS failure yet. And I have built probably 20 to 25 battery packs with ANTS BMS, and I've never seen one fail. As far as the small size category, like my mini car or a Suron battery, I recommend either a company called Hot Packs that sells packs for Razor MX650 dirt bike builds. They sell packs that are around 30 amp hours and 72 volts. 
as far as I know, they do not sell any 76 volt packs, 21S, which can be a drawback because everything I do is 21S. I don't do 20S anymore. On the other side, we talk about the larger vehicles like my Murray Kilowatt or this four wheeler, for example. You need a lot more power for a vehicle with four wheels than two wheels. Even if, even if they were similar weights, which they won't be, the inefficiency of having four wheels and the size of a vehicle with four wheels, you really need to go up in your battery pack size quite a bit. I would never run this four wheeler on a single 24 amp hour pack like the ones I build. I can do it, but the power and the amount of stress I'm putting on that battery is unnecessary. So I run three packs in it, three 24 amp hour packs. So 72 amp hours, 76 volt. And that is almost six kilowatt hours. I think it's like 5.7. So with the four wheelers, if I did this again, and I was doing this on a budget because these packs were expensive, I think I spent $900 per pack to build them myself. So that's $2,700 for the battery packs in this four wheeler. So what I would recommend is a little bit of a life hack I found. Now keep in mind, with this hack, you have to be able to build. And also with this hack, you are not, these are not small battery packs. These are large cells I'm about to tell you about. And you might already know about them, but these are larger cells that I use to build the pack in my Murray Kilowatt, which is a 26S pack. The drawback to these cells is you can only buy them in 63 amp hour at the price I'm going to mention. 63 amp hour is a huge cell. If you take 20 of those and put them in series to get yourself a 72 volt pack, that pack is going to be huge. Too big for a dirt bike for the most part, too big for a mini cart, 100% too big for a mini cart. There's really no way around that. They're just too big. This would be for your four wheeler builds, and this would be for your larger go-kart builds and anything in that category, the larger stuff typically on four wheels. The JP3 cell you can buy from overstock sites for $10 a cell. For perspective, that is somewhere around one-tenth the price. So you're saving so much money going with these cells. Again, the drawback would be the size of them. You would not use them for a mini cart you would not use them for a larger four-wheeler build. With these packs, I can build a 21S pack with the polycarbonate to protect it, with the BMS, with all of the rivets or bolts that I'm gonna to use to connect the cells together, with the copper that I'm gonna use as bus bars for right around five to $700. Now, that might sound like a lot, but we're talking about a five to six kilowatt hour pack, okay? That is a very large pack that could give you a fair amount of runtime in a four-wheeler or a larger go-kart build. So that is my life hack. You cannot touch that amount of power. Oh, and by the way, each one of those cells can push around 500 amps, okay? So you can build a 500 amp 21S or 20S pack for somewhere around five to six hundred dollars all your materials and of course when i talk about this i'm talking about building right so you if you're not a battery builder currently you would need to do a lot of research and really understand uh, what a short circuit is what safe building tactics are there's something called fish paper that we insulate between everything because you have to control where power goes when you're building up the battery pack and if you have a short to ground somewhere, you have a potential fire on your hands. It is very important to research before you start trying to build your own battery pack. But the advantage of it is if you're building something like my Murray Kilowatt or a Yurf Dog or one of those other go-karts, these JP3 cells could be your life hack to a relatively affordable build. And I recommend Far Driver with built-in Bluetooth. You can get a controller for one of those for uh, approximately 200 to say $500, depending on how much power you're going to want to push. You can build that battery pack with JP3 cells for around $500, and then you can get your motor for around 500. So now for $1,500, you have electronics that are fairly powerful. I mean, really, really powerful and fairly long run times. So that is what I wanted to discuss today as far as 
what packs I run and what I recommend for people. Now, if you're not on a tight budget, by all means, buy a 21S pack from Electro & Co. They sell a 21S pack that's around 30 amp hours or so, but you're gonna pay $1,300 and you're gonna wait a few weeks for it. You might even wait a month or two for it. So those are your options. It really depends on if you have more money or time. Um, I think Hot Packs is, is probably the best deal I've found when it comes to a balance for money and time. Again, if you're okay with a 20S pack. I like 21S, that's every, so any 72 volt controller that you look at can handle a maximum of around 90 volts, uh, maybe 95. So that means if you go 21S, a fully charged battery pack is 88 volts. So why not push the voltage where you, where, where you can, you know, because they have to make the capacitors and the MOSFETs to handle those voltages. So why not go slightly higher voltage? I mean, that's going to lower the amperage you need for a given power. So I think that extra voltage is always a good idea. So if you have a 72 volt controller, I recommend 21S. I think that is the way to go. Again, it's hard to find 21S packs. They're just not as easy to find. The next topic people ask me about is runtime. And I think there is a lot of things from the past causing people to think that modern lithium ion batteries are gonna be so limited in runtime and they think that they think that, that is going to be a problem for them or a big concern. And the reality is it just hasn't been for me. I run a 24 amp hour, uh, 76 volt pack on my mini cart and I've never had an issue with running out of battery, not once. I run three of those battery packs on my four wheeler. Again, I can run and ride for as long as I want, make it back to where I came from and still have over 30 or 40% battery left. And I rarely charge my batteries all the way. So my experience is runtime is just a non-issue now everybody's different and everybody's use case is different my use case is i like to ride for between 30 minutes and two hours if i'm at busco beach we might ride for up to two hours if i'm at home i'm only riding for 30 minutes to an hour i go out and i rip hard and then i come back so for me i'm never really thinking about battery i charge up to around 90 percent before i leave maybe 80 percent and then I come back and I always have over 40 or 50%. So runtime is just a non-issue for me. Now, if you're gonna build some kind of street legal dirt bike, runtime is a big deal for you because you're actually commuting with it. I do not commute with anything that I've built so far. What I do is I go out and I ride for fun. If you're commuting, you may care more about those things. I, I can't really give you any information on how many miles you're gonna get from a given battery. I could give you some guesses, you know, on a dirt bike, I could guess that per amp hour, you'll get one mile. That's probably a good guess. But again, do you rip or do you ride? If you're ripping, you're pulling 10 to 20,000 watts on your dirt bike. You're gonna pull your battery down really fast. It's the same with your four wheeler. If you're racing a gas powered four wheeler and you're running full throttle a lot, you're gonna have to fill up a lot more often a lot more often. You're going to go through five to ten times more fuel if you're full throttle almost constantly racing around a track. So whether you're running gas or electric, it really just depends on how hard you run it. So I'm going to see my power get throttled from my motor before I'm going to have a dead battery. Let me put it that way. Um, the, the battery itself is not really my limiting factor. It's my motor. They make a liquid-cooled version of this motor, so you could run a little radiator and a fan, and you could cool the motor much, much more effectively than air-cooled. But for me, I don't race on tracks, and if I do, I'm going to race for a few minutes and then take a break. I'm not going to go out and race for an hour on the track. So for me, it's just all those battery questions are just a non-issue for me. It's not even something I think about. Everything I build has more than enough battery power for the way I ride and how much I ride.
Last weekend when I was out here, if you watched my Murray Kilowatt update video, a deer right here, or up ahead a little bit, ran out in front of me. That's one of my biggest fears riding fast out here, is a deer running out in front of me. If you've ever seen how much damage they do to cars when they hit the front end, you know that deer have some uh, pretty, pretty hard bodies to hit and they will, they will definitely hurt you. So that is one thing I think about a lot when I'm riding out here. Riding my four-wheeler efficiently like this, I'm just barely pulling any battery. Here's what I'll do really quick. I've probably ridden about five miles, no, nah, five to seven miles since I charged it. And I actually did charge it all the way. I've ridden about five to seven miles since I charged this. And I did charge it to 100%, which I rarely do. But let's just see how much battery remaining I have. <clears throat> After riding about five or seven miles, and that is on over 70 amp hours. I have 88% left after riding approximately seven miles on this four-wheeler. Keep in mind, during this ride, I have not been going heavy on the throttle. I'm riding kind of similar in a way that you would ride a golf cart, but probably a little faster. But as you can see, I mean, riding this way, it's fairly efficient. So at this speed right here, I'm pulling 3,000 watts, okay? So with a 3,000 watt pull, I can go two hours. So if I rode like this at 25 miles per hour, it would last two hours if I moved at this speed constantly, just for perspective. And that was going up a slight hill, so Going up a slight hill, I could go for two hours at 25 miles per hour. These are the best ways I can explain this stuff to you guys because everybody's riding style is different, their weight is different, their terrain is different. There's so many variables that it's, it's difficult to put any kind of time on, on riding. If you were to ride this golf cart speed, so let's say, to me golf cart speed is 15 miles per hour. I would guess you could probably ride for four four or five hours at golf cart speed on this. So let's say you were just kind of trail riding slowly and just taking in the scenery, not trying to race or anything like that. You could probably go for several hours just cruising a trail, taking it easy. And to me, that's plenty. We're going to Busco this Tuesday. We'll be there from Tuesday until Sunday. And the way we ride at Busco is we'll ride for about probably a minimum of an hour when you leave. And sometimes we'll ride up to two hours. So it's our typical ride time at Busco is about an hour to two hours. And I usually come back with around 50 to 60% of my battery. Well, okay. Let's be accurate here. I probably come back with between 30 to 60% of my battery, depending on how I'm riding. When you're riding with a group of people, you're typically not going to be racing constantly. So with a larger group of people, you're more cruising the trails instead of doing a lot of racing. Now, if I ride just with my one friend, we do a lot more of the fast riding. I'm the best one-handed driver there ever was. <laughs>